Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is July 8th and this is my shop update. It has been uh, quite a while since I've done one of these, so I wanted to just uh, hop on here and kind of catch you up with where things are at as uh, things are actually starting to progress forward again because uh, I'm not moving anymore, which uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing to be at that point. It has been a very long road and I'm glad that is all behind me. So I want to show you a little bit about what's going on in the shop here as I'm working on some new videos and things and uh, what's going on outside as well, sort of, you know, like, like it's always been. So the first major thing with the shop is that it is, you know, fully set up and uh, ready to go. The last little piece of the puzzle was the dust collection system. And I installed that about a month ago, or at least I finished installing it. I put the collector together like in January, and then I got the duct work and everything installed a month ago. So it's been super nice to have actual plumbed in dust collection to my major tools again. It's a lot better than carting a dust collector around and plugging it into every single tool. That got really, really annoying. And I knew it wasn't the right solution to, for me because a lot of times I would just not use dust collection because it was too much of a pain to actually hook up the collector. So I'm back to this. A couple of videos coming out about the dust collection system, installing it and getting it set up. So look for that soonish. <laughs> Next big thing, a project that I'm actually working on. So this bad boy here is a serpentine chest of drawers. So this is the profile that is on the whole front of the cabinet. And it's, uh, it's been interesting. It's like, how can we take a regular chest of drawers and make it much more annoying <laughs> to make? Because there's everything, like nothing is straightforward. It's like you come out here, you're like, okay, I can put this, I can make the transition molding. Normally, if it was a square case, it'd be like an hour and you're done. You know, you run some molding profile on the edge of a board, you rip it off, you miter it to the case and glue it on and you're done. But this thing, you're like, okay, let's make some templates and do some other work and goof around a bit and try and figure stuff out all to make a piece of molding that does this. <laughs> uh, six hours. <laughs> so this, uh, this project will be uh, six videos. And I have now shot, uh, what, four of them. So uh, the next thing on here is going to be the drawers, which will be the next kind of longer uh, build process for this, or at least filming process. And then the last video will be making the top, which would be super easy compared to the rest of the case, and then applying all the finish and getting the hardware on the drawers and all that stuff. So those six videos will start coming out when? They'll come out when they're done. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of where that's at. I, I am waiting until I have the entire project complete before releasing the first one. So figure maybe sometime in August for those, but this is a, a pretty cool build. At least I think it's pretty cool. So out here in the, uh, the sawmill area, the, uh, the piles of logs are getting bigger. <laughs> uh, this is the giant cherry, which I picked up uh, at least a month ago now, I think it was like six weeks. Uh, turns out, or at least it sounds like, we're gonna be heading back and to try and recover the root ball from this tree. So. That should be a fun adventure. A lot of people are wondering when I'm gonna start cutting this guy up. Probably be in probably late August by the time I get around to it. Um, yeah, I'm waiting on blades to come in and I need to make a short extension for the saw to get the, the full length here without cutting any more off of it. So a little bit of you know, setup work and lead time before I cut this thing, but I am quite looking forward to that. I know some other people are wondering like when I'm gonna get the saw set up and get it cutting again. And the answer is I already have, <laughs> actually. Um, I, I found out that with the telehandler, I can end pick the entire saw and drive it around. So I can very easily just pick it up and set it in the driveway. So it's right by power and there's a nice working area around it because the driveway's paved. I did use it in the driveway already, cutting up a split walnut log. So this log was kind of splitting as it was standing. When it hit the ground after it was felled, it came completely apart. So put the log back together, cut it into slabs, and uh, some really cool, interesting shapes and colors and grains in that log. So one nice thing about picking up a saw and moving it when you're done is it makes cleanup really easy. So just pick up the saw, get it out of the way, and then you have full access to all of the debris and sawdust and everything that was thrown onto the ground during the, uh, the actual milling process. So. I don't know, that uh, <laughs> the, the portable saw thing is gonna be like that for a while until things are set up way in the back of the property. 
So that is what I have been up to. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a walnut sideboard and dresser by Andrew. For the dresser, Andrew cut three 32nd inch veneer from some slabs and glued them to cherry drawer boxes. Because he cut veneer off that slab, he had material left over, so he used that to make the sideboard. Well, everything except for the door panels, he didn't have quite enough for that, so we dug through roughly 100 board feet of walnut to find some figure material to match the drawers. Next this week is a pantry by Eric, and this was Eric's first major build. The carcass is made of three quarter inch cherry of plywood using pocket hole and dale joinery. The face frame and the base are milled from rough sawn cherry, and Eric used hand cut mortises and table saw cut tenons for the joinery. Next is a mid-century modern floating TV console. <laughs> it's made of solid walnut and it's all from one tree. It's book matched with waterfall edges. The drawers are joined with box joints and made of hard maple. The entire console uses a recessed French cleat to mount to the wall. And you can find more of John's work over on Facebook. Last this week is a hand tool cabinet by Charles. It's made from reclaimed red oak and finished with boiled linseed oil and wax. The joinery is dados reinforced with dowels. Charles was going for the look and feel of an old fashioned hand tool with this cabinet. So one last little thing I want to let you know about is the scholarship program over in the guild. I will leave you a link to that down in the description. The applications are open until the end of July and there are four different categories that you can apply for. There is 18 and under, 18 and up, uh, military, and then first responders. There are going to be three people selected from each of those categories and each of those people will get membership into the guild and their choice of three projects from any of the instructors, including myself. <laughs> so if you are interested in that, I will, again, leave you a link to that down in the description. So that is going to do it for this one. I'm going to get back to this thing and get this side molding attached so I can start making some drawers and get this thing done. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything uh, in the shop or anything anywhere else, I guess, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.